Well, folks, Fractured in Alterac Valley is the new Hearthstone expansion, as you might have seen the trailer hitting earlier today. And now we've got uh, a full announcement video and maybe some more blog posts on the way. But for now, uh, these are uh, our initial card reveals. So we're going to talk about uh, the cards in this year video. And as you'll note behind me, it's hero cards that have returned wild heart guff as many of us speculated that this would both be all track valley but also that hero cards would be the final evolution of these characters uh five mana druid hero card that is absolutely bonkers set your maximum mana to 20 20 max mana doubling the total that you also get a mana crystal and draw a card so, uh, of course, uh, it's it's not going to instantly get you to 20. You're going to have to take some time to get up to 20. You can use your hero power to advance that, gaining a mana crystal, basically uh, turning your hero power into a sort of wild growth. Or you can use your hero power here uh, to draw you a card, which is kind of like the warlock hero power with no downside. So that's pretty sick. So all in all, I mean, what is the use case here, right? Well, if you get into a super late game scenario, you can play a lot of really crazy big stuff. And maybe that could be like OTK combos that wouldn't otherwise be possible without 20 mana. Or maybe it's just like, you know, double survival of the fittest for some just insane, crazy play or survival of the fittest into some carnival clowns or whatever your big ramp druid heart desires. Now, that's crazy. That's awesome. Like, I love it. This is going to be a really fun card to mess around with. From a competitive standpoint, you have to ask yourself like, oh man, you know, is it going to be quick enough to get up to that maximum mana of 20 and start reaping the benefits or even, you know, getting to like 12 or 14 where you start to to, to pay that off. It, it might just take a long time to spin that up, even with all of these additional ramp aspects, Guff himself ramping and then the hero power. And you might want to run some other ramp cards in your deck as well, toss in all those overgrowths, everything possible to get yourself up to 20. I, I could see that being a challenge, like finding the right sort of curve or accelerating enough to make this impactful, that it's worth it, because you're more or less giving up that five mana turn when you play Guff, and you're probably building your deck in a really specific way, so you have to have payoffs uh, to make this one worth it, and I'm not sure it will be, but really crazy fun idea, just going to be a challenging one to deliver on. All right, so next up here is Lightforged Cariel, hero card for Paladin, seven mana. Battlecry deal two damage to all enemies, so a consecration built in here, giving you a little bit more wiggle room to play Cariel. And you also equip a 2-5 immovable object, which we'll talk about here in a second. On top of that, you've got your hero power blessing of queens. Uh, it's two mana, give a random minion in your hand, plus four, plus four. So a blessing of queens is a hand buff instead of a board buff, but that could stack up. Uh, some pretty crazy stats on your divine shields or rush minions, etc. And then the immovable object, if we scroll through this video here, is a seven mana two five, but it's just automatically equipped, so the cost is only relevant in some cases. Uh, doesn't lose durability, and your hero takes half damage rounded up. So a really good weapon here as far as uh, trading into your opponent's stuff is concerned. You can kind of use this to... Uh, chip away at your opponent's stuff, or you know, just keep going face over and over again for two damage, kind of like a hunter hero power baked in here with the movable object, but best utilized to clear up your opponent's stuff because you're you're not taking as much damage on the return. So uh, pretty cool here. It's really just a way to get extra crazy stat value out of your hero power. Now, much like Guff, you know, coming in at seven mana, it, it does take a little while for this one to snowball and start to make this hero power feel like it's gonna have those long-term effects because it might take three or four turns to really get the stat value out of this one. Helps if you have it on rush minions and things, but still takes a while to really make an impact on the game. So you're kind of relying, I think, on this weapon and that initial consecration to make Cariel feel okay to play. When you compare it to other big seven mana plays that are available in like hand buff paladins um, or you know, Libram paladins, whatever paladin deck you want to envision, she's competing with some pretty high tempo stuff around that slot like varying you've got liadrins which are going to sometimes just give you a ton of things Librum of hopes for defense so I, I don't think she'll be out of out of line in that sort of environment like that deck does run plenty of seven and eight mana things that she feels like she could slot in it's just is she going to replace one and uh, does she offer enough to make it worth it to bump your curve up perhaps just a little i think she'll be fairly close uh but not always going to work because sometimes you'll just want faster, higher pressure plays, bodies on board, stats in play, and uh, Cariel might be a little bit risky. So uh, we'll have to see, but I love the idea of this. The movable object is awesome, and more hand buff sounds really fun. 
All right, so moving on here to Siphon Mana. Uh, this is a mage spell, two mana arcane, as you can see. It deals two damage. I can go face or hit a minion. And it's got a new keyword here for the expansion, Honorable Kill. Essentially, this is when you do the exact amount of damage necessary to kill something, you get a bonus. So for instance, if this kills a 2-2 two, two minion, you're gonna get a reduction of the spells in your hand by one mana, which is just completely bonkers. So if you're playing mage, just don't play anything at two health, or maybe, you know, if it's later in the game, don't play anything at three health, because they got a ping into siphon mana, and suddenly, you know, mage gets really good at dealing all these little different variables of damage, and then they get these big time cost reductions in hand. Cards like this, to me, are really, really terrifying. Also, I think, really good. The fact that it has the flexibility to go face, and it has this just ridiculously strong upside, like an Octobot, Thorison, whatever you want to call it, uh, upside for quest mages, a deck that already works pretty well. Uh, I think Siphon Mana has a lot of potential. This one looks really, really strong. But again, reminder, Honorable Kill is dealing the exact amount of damage. So if your opponent has a 2-3 and this is all you can play, it's not going to work out well. You might have to save it for later, but I think the payoff is still pretty enormous. Here's another example of Honorable Kill. This is a Blood Seeker for Hunter, a new weapon, 2 mana 2-2. Two, two. Honorable Kill gain plus 1, plus 1. So this is kind of cool because if you kill that 2 health minion like we talked about previously, this becomes a... 3-2, uh, essentially, because uh, you spend one durability. Then you kill three health minion, this becomes a 4-2, uh, so on and so forth. And it just keeps scaling up, and you can either use that to clear a bunch of stuff or eventually maybe just turn the corner and go face once you feel like you've scaled up the Bloodseeker enough uh, to make it worth it. Now, Hunter's not always a deck that... Or, class really that loves trading so there are some concerns there like you're gonna have to end up trading too much for this one it makes sense but if you do the payoff down the road might be nice and sometimes just having a weapon to clean up your opponent's stuff while you're developing your own things that lasts for multiple turns in environments where you get the right numerical breakpoints and you have a lot of little one one rush minions to soften things up and line up good trades this seems pretty strong to me so uh, i've got some hopes here for blood seeker all right, moving on. We got kind of two cards in one here. This video is trippy. I haven't actually watched it yet. I'm just scanning through for cards. Up first is Gnome Private on the left. One better, one three. Honorable kill, gain to attack. So really good at cleaning up, uh, say, one ones, for instance, could really start to scale as an aggressive threat. I think that's a great opener for aggro decks, uh, getting ability to clean things up, but also uh, just scale with attack. And there's lots of ways to line up numbers. And, and certain metas where there's one ones everywhere will, will work really nicely for that. We've also got the Knight Captain here, five mana, three, three battle cry, deal three damage and honorable kill, gain plus three, plus three. So keep in mind that the battle cry there will also work for the honorable kill since the minion is dealing the damage, which means this can be a five mana, six, six that's dealing three if it works out well. I like cards like this because it has the flexibility to go face. There's a lot of three health break points in Hearthstone that are very favorable for this one as well. And then it actually can continue to scale up. Now as a six, six, it's probably unlikely to get future honorable kills because six health is like, that's how often is that actually going to happen or be a relevant uh, you know, break point. So uh, I think it's unlikely to go beyond that, but still that's kind of that like fire elemental sort of stat line and, and uh, it, at five mana as well. So I, I think there's um, some reasonable options here for Night Captain for decks that need uh, a mid game swing card that also has some potential reach as well. All right, moving on here to Drek'thar. And uh, Drek'thar is a part of a pair of cards uh, that are all about this like promotion, I guess, that got teased. Uh, you can get more details. I'll link some stuff down uh, in the description, but essentially uh, you're gonna pick a free legendary, either Drek'thar or the other Alliance dude to get and then there's going to be this like uh battle between horde and alliance and you're going to get points for different sides and i don't know there's a whole thing but uh, basically you can get drekthar starting today if you want so for drekthar uh here's how this works this is a four mana four four battle cry this costs more than every minion in your deck summon two of them and that's not two drekthars that's two of the minions in your deck so you get drekthar and you know maybe a couple two drops or three drops if you're really lucky or try to force it. And assuming, I think that's just random based on what we see here in the video. You play Drek'thar, he uh, he summons you a Kolkar pack runner and an imprisoned Felmaw, which is probably pretty fitting because uh, I think uh, <laughs> I think Face Hunter is a great sort of build for this. Run a bunch of cheat minions. You can still have higher cost spells if you need to. So you could run like piercing shots alongside this with no problem. They could cost the same and it's not disruptive. And uh, this becomes a really big uh, board builder for four mana that potentially... Uh, you know, essentially 
tutors out some high value stuff for you too. You could even use this very specifically for shenanigans. There's battle cry bonuses. And ultimately it's just a really aggressive card, which in Hearthstone uh, tends to work pretty well. Just getting a bunch of stats in play uh, for a fast aggressive deck as a kind of finisher <laughs> on four mana, or at least like a tempo finisher, like a big, you know, this is my final wave of threat. I think Trekthar serves that purpose really, really nicely. So here on the other side of things, we have Vandar Stormpike, the Alliance side of this equation. Also, four mana, four, four, and kind of the reverse battle cry. If this costs less than every minion in your deck, reduce their cost by three. So an enormous uh, cost discount if this is the cheapest minion in your deck. So any kind of deck running big stuff, like big warriors, for instance, could really discount all of their minions. Uh, to absurd degrees. Now it is minions and decks, so you have to draw into them to really pay this off, but that might not take too long. So if you hit this guy early, it definitely has that kind of Keliseth vibe where it's just gonna completely change the course of a game and make your deck totally pop off. So big druids and big warriors. Uh, even if you're just running like a bunch of five drops and you're happy to run some spells, you just wanna cheat a specific discount on some really key threat or thing, that's always possible in the future as well. So. Vandar looks like a pretty crazy card that will, you know, I don't think I have quite the consistency of our previous guy, but has some pop off and absurd potential for sure. All right, so this is really cool. We have like uh, aura style effects coming to Alterac Valley. This is a four mana spell for Paladin, the Dunbaldar Bridge. It reads after you summon a minion, give it plus two plus two and it lasts for three turns. So you're kind of applying this long term aura to the board. This one's three turns and uh, it's just, you know, really nice buff set up and you know, build some kind of crazy board after playing Dunbaldar Bridge. So I love this. We've been asking for these sorts of things in Hearthstone for a really long time. Uh, these kind of medium term, I guess, uh, game adjusting effects. Now, I mean, you know, spending four mana to kind of do nothing for a bit, especially on curve would be pretty tough. And I think the setups for this are kind of hard. Uh, Paladin's already got some really good ways to like pay off wide to token boards, particularly with Silverhand Recruit Synergies. So this in some ways feels a little redundant and a little slow to me. I, I can't envision how many decks are going to succeed, like setting up for later. Uh, that said, if you think your deck can stick around for three turns, this could stack a lot of additional stats. So there is big payoff there if you think you can really start to leverage it. But that makes me nervous. It feels kind of backwards for how Hearthstone currently works, which is when we kind of need tempo now. We need to do things first. Uh, and this is more of a setup for later, and that's delayed gratification is not a great thing in Hearthstone lately. So I have some concerns about this, but I love the effect and the design of this card. We have another one here with Snowfall Graveyard for Rogue. This one reads your death rattles trigger twice, and it also lasts three turns. Maybe they're all going to last three turns if you watch this video. I don't know. Uh, so Rogue Death Rattle Synergies. Now, I do like this one's a little bit cheaper, right? Uh, it's basically not quite as much commitment. Rogue can also sometimes get things like this out a little sooner uh, with preps, which encourages me from a speed standpoint and uh, death rattle synergies in rogue. There's always a few, right? They're always kind of lingering around. Nothing comes to mind right now is super powerful. Uh, we don't have a lot of like meta rogue death rattles right now, but I love the potential for this one. I want to do some like ticket shuffling and stuff, just getting absurd uh, tickets in my deck and those sorts of things. Some big old death rattles are possible as well. So I like that this one's much, much cheaper if maybe a little bit harder to work with because it is demanding some specificity. But again, really cool to see these sorts of effects in the game. All right. So uh, yeah, there we go. That was it for the initial batch of cards. Who will win? Drekthar or Vandar? I think Drekthar is probably going to be the better card, but I'm way more excited to play Vandar because he looks super handsome with that red beard. What a handsome fellow. So uh, those are the initial batch of uh, card reveals. Uh, I didn't do star ratings for these, but everything's a little hectic today. So I may just write some star ratings uh, down in the comments below. Um, overall, some pretty neat stuff, some strong stuff, some weak stuff, as always a mix, but I'll try to prep that up. So share your thoughts on uh, all of these cards. I'll drop some links again for some Alterac Valley stuff in uh, the comments. This all kind of came together a little late today. They were a few minutes late on the reveal, but there's some big patch note stuff, roadmap stuff, all of which we'll talk about. And uh, I'll probably hop on stream this afternoon to run through all this in more detail if you want to come hang out over on Twitch. Uh, that said, thanks again for hanging out as always. Look forward to more card reveals and reviews in the future. And uh, until next time, game on.